Amazing Grace was written by John Newton in the year 1772. He was once a slave seafaring captain. And uh, through a couple of accidents at sea and close calls, he decided to give up the seafaring life and he turned into an Anglican minister. And that was the inspiration for this song that he wrote in 1772, Amazing Grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved someone like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. Happy Father's Day. We give thanks today for the blessing of all those who've been like fathers to us. And welcome to our program today. Many of the people in the Gospels lived next to the sea, and many of the people for whom the Gospels were written loved a good sea story, especially a good stormy sea story. We'll hear one of those stories today and look at what that story tells us about how we live today. Thank you to Janet and Tony, our tech team, our music coordinators, Marsha, Marilyn, and Sandy, our talented men's choir, as well as Adam, Sue, and Catherine for lifting our spirits throughout today's program. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come to you on bended knee and ask you for guidance we look to you as our Father, our guide, our inner voice. We look to our birth fathers, adopted fathers, fathers-in-law, father figures, our husbands who are fathers. And we look to our loved ones who long to be a father and to those who have lost a loved one. This is a day for family for being with one another just as we are. This is a day for love, for accepting our failures and our triumphs. This is a day for hope, for seeing beyond the limitations and looking through the window. This is a day for peace, for seeing past mistakes and learning to make peace with them in ourselves and in others. 
all-loving God and Heavenly Father, we see you and know you are with us as we walk another day on this earth with family, love, hope, and peace. Thanks be to God. Amen. morning. Today's reading is from Mark's Gospel, chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. It's the story of Jesus calming the storm. I'm reading from the New International Version. Listen. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Bless these words to our use and understanding. Thank you, Sue. The story we heard today of Jesus stilling the water is fairly well known. There are paintings and there are songs. One song that does come to mind is from the Medical Mission Sisters, where Miriam Winter writes, Christ asleep within my boat, whipped by wind, yet still afloat. Joy is tried by storm. Her reflection in the song reinforces the usual interpretation of this story reminding people that when the storms of life hit, and hit they will, there's no escaping them, but when they hit, there is a grounding presence, a center that helps us weather those storms. That's the usual interpretation. Recently, I came across a more expanded interpretation, one that looks at where Jesus and the disciples are coming from and to where they are going, their point of departure and their point, their destination. They were traveling at night. They were going to, from Capernaum to the country of the Gerasenes. Capernaum was where they had spent a lot of time. It's not far from Jesus' hometown of Nazareth. They were among people they knew and understood because they had the same background and the same faith. The people also knew them and knew of them. They were family and friends. And so they were leaving this comfort behind and going to some place unknown. They set out in the darkness. They were crossing a stormy sea at night to go to some place new, among people who were not like them, among a people that they really did not know very well. So crossing the sea at night in the middle of the storm is probably not only a description of what was happening externally, but also what was happening within them, internally. 
as the storms of walking into the unknown. I think that these internal storms when facing something unknown and new is an experience that most of us have had, something we can all relate to. Think about the first time you applied for a job or any time you apply for a job, or the first day on the job, or that first time meeting someone new or trying something new. You know, that feeling of butterflies in the stomach, the dry mouth, maybe a lump in your throat. Some might get it as bad as nausea. I had a mentor who experienced this kind of anxiety before each and every sermon. I have to admit, even I, when this pandemic started and we started moving to online programs, I was very anxious. You see, I usually preach off the cuff and rely a lot on the immediate interaction with a live congregation. Preaching to my own iPhone like this was completely different and a new experience that was really out of my own frame of comfort and experience. I found it very nerve wracking and I found it so strange that I needed to go back to one step and that's to write down my sermons. But see, now these are all minor destinations. There are more frightening destinations in life. The uncertainty of a medical diagnosis and how it's going to turn out. Same with a major injury or some medical event. Now, I don't know how many of you know the story of Alex Smith, a former American football quarterback who played for the San Francisco 49ers, the Kansas City Chiefs, and the Washington Redskins. After joining the Redskins in 2018, he suffered a catastrophic injury after being tackled by Houston's Kareem Jackson and J.J. Watt. Smith suffered a spiral and compound fracture to his tibia fibula in his right leg. And after the procedures were completed to set these fractures, he developed necrotizing fasciitis, the flesh-eating bacteria. His, his leg turned black, huge blisters formed. He became septic. Saving his life was now the top priority. Saving his leg was just something secondary. So for Smith, both the point of departure, the journey and the destination were quite grim. I know even in our own small community, there are those who face this kind of voyage and there will be more in our community who will be facing that voyage. It is indeed a horrifying, dark, and terrible storm. So what does it mean to have G Christ asleep in your boat when you find yourselves in this stormy sea? Like the disciples, we might cry out to God and anyone else that might be listening, don't you care that we are perishing? But Christ was only asleep. Christ was still alive. The eternal, internal and external storm were not the last words. There was hope, and hope makes room for the soul to breathe. For Alex Smith, that hope came in the form of Washington football team physician Robin West, who reached out and called his friend, Johnny Owens, a master of physical therapy and the former chief of human performance optimization at the Center for the Intrepid in Washington, D.C. Now this center specializes in the rehabilitation of military personnel, especially those with blast injuries. And after convincing Smith's doctors to keep his leg, Smith received special permission to go to the center for rehabilitation. Smith recalls his experience at the center. He says, it was a humbling and crazy, and it really put my injury into perspective. But at the same time, it gave me such hope because Johnny Owens and the doctors and the physiotherapists at CFI had seen injuries like this so many times before. To them, the idea of me playing again wasn't a question. It was without a doubt, when to everyone else, it was just crazy. Smith found himself in the hands of those who had expertise. He was surrounded by those who had gone through or were going through the same experience. He says there was a special energy down there. Don't go there if you want to feel sorry for yourself. 
There they planted the seed for me to play football again. So for Smith, hope led to optimism which fueled perseverance. He was surrounded by the hands and minds of Christ in the world, the doctors, the fans, his colleagues, and especially his family. After 17 surgeries with the help of a number of prosthetics and an hour upon uh, and hour upon hour of persevering through various therapies, Smith returned to the field in 2020, playing an, in a number of games, culminating in a game against the Philadelphia Eagles, in which he threw two touchdown passes that helped the team to a 2014 victory. Pretty amazing going from these horrible injuries, life-threatening injuries, to being able to play the game again as a quarterback. And in that time that he was playing, he was tackled a number of times. So you see, knowing who to turn to, being surrounded by wise and loving people, and finding hope, optimism, a clear destination, and perseverance, these are the things that saved Alex Smith's life. The letter of John reminds us that where there is love, God is to be found. And certainly, Smith was surrounded by love, surrounded by God. The story of the storm-tossed disciples is a story about journeys and destinations. It's about a, a story about confidence in God, optimism. It's a story about confidence in ourselves to reach our goal. The story of the storm, like I said, is ultimately about optimism and perseverance. Barack Obama once wrote, your response in life has to be to reject cynicism and reject pessimism and push forward with a certain infectious and relentless optimism. Not a blind optimism, not one that ignores the scale and scope of our challenges, but that hard-earned optimism that is rooted in the stories of very real progress that have occurred throughout human history. Optimism that looks at the whole picture, sees the challenges for what they are, and knows that they are, there is something that we can accomplish even in the midst of those challenges. That's the anchor, that's the hope, that's the perseverance in the storm. And we have those kinds of stories that Obama talks about all around us, stories like Alex Smith, stories that can anchor us and give us confidence, stories in the community around us, in the friends and family, as they tell their stories, what they have gone through and how they persevered. I am reminded of an old song, Will your anchor hold in the storms of life when clouds unfold their wings of strife? When the strong tides lift and the cables strain, will your anchor drift or will it remain? We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll, fastened to the rock that cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. That rock that is firm and deep, that love, is Christ's presence within each one of us and in those around us. It includes the loving community that surrounds us, which is ready to help, ready to travel with us, with the wisdom garnered throughout the years of their own experiences of storms. That's what the disciples discovered. They made it through the storm and they arrived on the other shore. That's what Alex Smith discovered. With the help of those who cared for them, for him, he weathered the storm and was able to return to a somewhat normal life. These stories remind us that with this kind of faith, with this confidence, we can put our boats out into the water, even into the dark, even through stormy shore seas and to unfamiliar shores.
Let us pray for the whole of creation, all people and nations according to their needs, for our friends, family, and neighbors seeking prayer, for those whom we name in our hearts. We give you thanks for those who are our fathers and those who are father-like to us. We pray that you would grant a special blessing to all those who have helped us in our lives, helped encourage us and shown us the way even through the stormiest of seas, helping us to reach our various destinations. We especially pray for those who miss, are missing those who are like fathers to them and their fathers. We pray that we would find comfort in our shared memories and our tears and laughter. We pray for our Indigenous peoples as we look to Indigenous Peoples Day tomorrow. May we continue to work at truth and reconciliation and help find healing for the harm that's been caused our Indigenous brothers and sisters. Comfort those who are sorrowing. Comfort those who are missing loved ones. We give you thanks for the love and life that flows through us and all of creation. And we pray that you would help us to be good stewards of this earth through which the web of life is sustained. We pray for frontline workers, those administering vaccines and those caring for the sick. We pray for our governments that you would continue to lead them in the way that leads to the best for their people, for equality, and for justice. We pray for those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, those seeking healing, those going through difficult times, undergoing medical procedures or convalescing from illness. We pray for Sandra, Carla, Karen, Rob, Catherine, Jerry, Betty, Gwen, Rena, and Ray, as well as those whom we name now in the silence. May they know the love that enfolds them from those who are around them. Grant wisdom and understanding to all caregivers. We give thanks for the blessing of everyone gathered and watching this program. May the light of creation shine upon all of us and may love envelop each one of us. May we continue to grow in the awareness of the profound depth of love that surrounds and supports us and the whole of creation. May the pure light within each one of us guide us. May we be blessed, encouraged, and empowered in every aspect of our lives. Hear our prayers of the prayers of your whole creation through Christ, your inbreaking light, as we pray in the spirit of St. Francis. As I live every day, I want to be a channel for peace. May I bring love where there is hatred, and healing where there is hurt, joy where there is sadness, and hope where there is fear. I pray that I may always try to understand and comfort other people, as well as seeking comfort and understanding from them. Wherever possible, may I choose to be a light in the darkness, a help in times of need, and a caring, honest friend. And may justice, kindness, and peace flow from my heart forever. Amen. Thank you again for joining us. We're so delighted that you did. Remember to continue to subscribe and like our programs, and please feel free to leave a comment. We enjoy reading your comments, whether they are on our Facebook page or on our YouTube channel. Tomorrow is June 21st, and it's National Indigenous Peoples Days. And given the continued discovery of missing children, I invite you to consider giving to the United Church's Healing Fund. The Healing Fund supports healing initiatives for survivors of the residential school system and its ongoing intergenerational impacts. You can follow the link in the description box or search for United Church Healing Fund for more information on how to make a donation. As we go into this week, I do wish you all a very happy Father's Day. And I, we go knowing that Whatever the storms of life, we do have anchors around us to help us. We have the wisdom of people around us 
the love and care of family and friends and our faith communities. And so we go knowing that we are surrounded by the love of God, that the Spirit dwells within each one of us and all those around us to encourage us and to inspire us. And we have Jesus' life as a guide and a friend. Amen. This is the story of a family that you are part of too. And the thing about this family, we never forget about you. We're right here when you're shining, here when you're falling down. We're right here when you need a song to sing. So come sing with us in Georgetown. This is that place where everybody's family this is that place where no one is alone this is that place where everybody's family this is that place where everybody everybody's home everybody's home This is the story of a planet that you are part of too. And the thing about this planet, it never forgets about you. It's right here when you're shining, right here when you're falling down. It's right here when you need a song to sing. So come sing with us in Georgetown. This is that world where everybody's family this is that world where no one is alone this is that world where everybody's family this is that world where everybody everybody's open your door up all the way and let the sun shine find you even on your darkest day open your mind up open your heart and let the sun shine in let it all the way in this is that church where everybody's family this is that church Everybody, everybody's home.